folks. Dr. Freedom here with the Times from Dr. News. News from in and around the universe. That is so amazing, so incredible, so mind-blowing that you're going to want to get your motor running. Get out on the highway. Oh, sorry. A little Steppenwolf wolf to start you off there. Um, and of course, unless you've been, let me see, on the dark side of the moon, and I don't mean the Pink Floyd album, but then again, in some cases, I could mean that. You would have heard that BBC Radio 6 had an interview this morning with Jody Whitaker. And here, let's show you. Let's get to the highlights. Let's get to the happy stuff. Let's get to the wham, bam, hold on. Oh, sorry. I forgot to do that. Okay. Uh, George Baker was out there, of course. Um, Jody seemed to be more than happy to embrace the fans. Oh, that's a little meme there to a little certain fellow who knows who he is. Um Stopping to take a couple photos. Oh, sorry. Some stupid nonsense. And, oh, here we are. Sorry, the audio is crap. That's if you're... That's if I remembered to share this with audio. Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, see? Technical difficulties. Ah! It happens to all of us. All right, there we go. Now let's try this again. All right. Just to give you an example there, you know, Jody happily doing selfies and photographs with the fans and whatnot. So, and including this young lucky fella right here. All right. So very nice to see that. Very nice to see that she's open to the fans in that way. You know, it's just heartwarming. All right, moving on. Okay, tune in tomorrow. By the way, um, 8.30 a.m., she's going to be on Lorraine on ITV. So you may want to go check that out as well. All right, moving on. Okay, how Jody missed fan reactions to getting now. This is some stupid thing this freaking thing's doing where it's putting, there we go, the video up. You know that stupid, annoying thing now where it sticks the video off to another corner if you scroll past it. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, said she didn't see people's reactions to her becoming the first female doctor because she's not on social media. So if you've seen any accounts saying Jody Whitaker, blah, 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 they're, they're, not, they're fake, okay? They're bogus. All right, just like our government. Oh, sorry, I <laughs> had a moment there. All right. Just like our president. Oh, well, I gotta stop. All right, they're gonna have, they're gonna come get me. Okay, this will be a blessing and a curse. All right, I've missed a lot of fun stuff and probably the bad stuff. Um, if you skip down here, um, click on this right here. I believe this. That, that all right? That's the BBC News interview. And a little, for a little bit further down, here's a clip from the interview. Oh, see, there that thing is again. Ah, all right. Okay, the overwhelming sense was that this is such an exciting journey. I, it, it's to be overjoyed. There's no advice you, know, you can do. No person plays this part the same way. What a freeing thing it is. All right. Da, 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 da. The people that are in this role that we're excited by and we're passionate about that we look up to don't always have to tick the same box. And that's, what is, that's what's really incredible about it. I've missed a lot of the fun stuff, okay, because she's not on social media. We already covered that. So I get... So if I get something, it's a mate screen grabbing me something, you know, and sending it to me. So she does get to see some of the stuff because people are screen grabbing it and sending it to her. All right. They obviously edit. Actually, sometimes they don't. She got to chuckle all that. All right. To her, as she said, if you listen to the clip of the um, audio, uh, that the role was not in the realm of possibility when she was growing up and that getting this part was incredibly emotional. And when she found out her audition had been successful, she goes, I didn't fate. I played it really cool and I cried. She covers this. Matter of fact, yeah, be sure to watch these on this channel here. Um, Cause she talks about, she found out she got the role when she was on the set of trust me and she had to keep it secret. So she had to play it straight faced from then on. Um, 
okay, she's looking forward to freedoms and fun and the scale of the storylines. Um, matter of fact, she called Chris Chibnall the Chibs, so we're going to have to keep that in mind. All right, she's all right, y'all, y'all got, especially, you know, as she's going to be working with Broad Church creator Chris Chibnall. I already know Chris. I already know how incredible he is. The direction he's going to take it is going to be amazing. I get excited by it. I don't even know what the journey is. Every script I read will be brand new. This certainly is very different. And she's got a lot of fantastic advice, you know, from other doctors. Because I'm lucky because I've had a body of work, so it's not like going from anonymous to recognize. I've worked with David Tennant and other people who've been part of the doctor journey. I knew there'd be an interest in me in me going to the shops. I hope it dies down as well as it's very boring. So, okay, so yeah, I I feel sorry for her. She's in for a hell of a time. And then this clickbait title came up: Jodie Whittaker should get chop if she's a flop. And that is not what Tom Baker said. That is the clickbait. Sorry clickbait clickbait it sounds like the name of something you want to click bake oh can bake oh, all right um what he said was that he's pleased with you know the bosses deciding to have the cast the very first female time late in the show but if the viewers start to lose interest the bosses should immediately write the talented actress out and replace her um speaking to the daily mirror i think it might be nice you know quite nice to have a woman but you just test it. If the audience don't like it, then just kill her off. She doesn't have to be an institution just because I stayed too long. I don't think anybody knows how it'll go. Nobody has ever failed, by the way, and nobody has. It's just how it is. And that's what Tom Baker said, not this half-baked bullshit that this jackass stuck on here is a freaking headline. They're trying to make Tom Baker sound bad. And I'm sorry, where's the respect? You know, you don't give a damn. You you just try to make Tom Baker sound like a total asshole. It's like, come on. That's not what he said. Should get chop if she's a flop. Jesus Christ, man, you're a poet and didn't know it. Go back to English school. All right, Eccleston breaks his silence on Jodie Whittaker, and all he basically had to say was one line that came down to, she's working class, she's northern, what can go wrong? And I can't believe they tried to make an article out of that because he was straightforward and to the point. And contrary to belief, he does not resent Doctor Who. He only had trouble with people in the upper echelons. He was talking about doing the 50th anniversary, but then declined. It was his decision. And, you know, he does not resent Doctor Who. He doesn't brush off, brush off fans or any of that. There's been a lot of big urban myths about Chris Eccleston. Okay, Dave Tennant put, his thing, he was gonna put in his two cents. Um, what do you call it? David first remark when he had first seen, seen his first Jody Whitaker cosplayer. Quote, I just texted her. I said, this is how it begins, Jody. End quote. Because I know her very well. It's very exciting. Jody, Jody is known as a great actress, which indeed she is, but she's known for, like the part she played in Broadchurch, which was terribly Brit, which, 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 Sorry. Oh, God which was terribly, terribly brilliant, so wonderful, so emotionally true, so raw. That's what she does brilliantly. But in life, Jody has a real directness, and she's very funny. I don't think we often get to see that in the parts that she gets asked to play. So I don't know what she'll choose to bring to it, but she's got a real spunkiness to her, spunkiness to her in her life, and she'll, she'll enjoy using some of that in Doctor Who. And it goes a bit on from there, you know. And then we got Bondi Langford chiming in. Oh, God, it's the sun. Here comes the sun. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. 90% of the time. Okay. Um, Bonnie Langford says, new doctor, Jody Whitaker's life will change forever. Duh. Because <laughs> Bonnie's been in, you know, in this life for going on a few years now. Just a few. You know. So basically, yeah, once you do get involved, especially when you're going to be playing the doctor, it's phew. Okay. So she, this is Bonnie Langford's little tidbit on it and whatnot. I'll leave this for you to read. You know, like I said, normally I don't like to use the sun, but you know, I think they're actually being a little truthful this time. Okay. BBC radio four. This was a program she did the other day. It doesn't really go into an interview. Um, basically what it does is I uh, have, see if I remember right. I'm trying to find a way to describe it. Okay, explains why she's hooked on podcast S-Town and Pete Tong's album, Classic House. And if you want, you can click play right here. 
All right, and skip to her bit just by clicking here. That's the very first. So you don't have to go through all this. It's mainly just talking about this podcast and music she likes. So no big interview here or anything like that, okay? All right. Okay, and lastly for today. Oh, God, that sounded like crap, didn't it? The Lucrative World of Dr. TV Memorabilia. Um, it's a nice little story about how some things are worth a ton and some things are not. Okay, so it's, if you're a collector and all that and you're into that kind of thing, I figured I'd throw this up just for you to enjoy. I got a good, I got a good read out of it. Okay, so latest news. Not a damn thing. Oh, sorry. I was looking through that page and I forgot to click off that tab. There's nothing on there. Don't worry about it. Okay, so Jody's done her first interviews since receiving the role of you know the 13th doctor um like i said i really wish i really wish um that people okay i don't know if that last bit got because zoom just freaked out and i really hope that people do get give her a chance it has gotten silly. It has gotten ridiculous. I'm sick and tired of all the idiots going, well, oh, I won't be watching because guess what? You just told me you are. That's bluster. That's bluff. That's I'm going to stick my bottom lip out put, put, and pout like a child and hope everybody gives me some attention. When in reality, you're going to do it. You're going to watch. And you know how I know? I'm not Nostra dumbass. It's called curiosity because whether you approve the female doctor or not, you're still going to want to watch Doctor Who. If you really are a fan of the show, and I really hate to use that phrase, you're going to stick with your show. If you don't like who's currently the Doctor, you hang around until they're replaced. But the problem is, it's getting old. It really has. And unfortunately, we did have some people who were pro Jody who messed with Peter Davison, and now he's left Twitter. It's gotten to be silly, folks. Please. Next time you're going to go to type out that tweet, next time you're going to be a keyboard warrior launching your assault of incredibly hateful words at that opponent, just remember the words of Mark Twain. Never argue with a fool in public because uh, people who overhear you may not know the difference. So until then, everybody, take care. Be kind to yourself. And each other. And it's great. Good night. <laughs>